In the Gospel this Sunday, our Lord teaches and instructs the crowds about the kingdom of God through the use of three parables. The first parable is about the enemy sowing weeds in the wheat field, and the farmer has to let the weeds and the wheat grow alongside of each other until harvest time. The second is the smallest little mustard seed being planted, which then grows up to be the largest of trees. And then the final parable is the mixing of the yeast with flour, which causes the entire batch to rise. And after our Lord finishes teaching the, the crowds about the kingdom of God, he departs. And his disciples come to him and they ask him to expound upon one of the parables. Now I find it very interesting that they only asked him to explain one of the parables and not all three. And I don't think it's because they understood the other two. The disciples weren't known for being the brightest group of people. They usually miss Christ's points. But it is the parable of the weeds and the wheat field that shouts warning. Because our Lord tells us that there are deceivers among us. And so this gets their attention because whatever is going to affect us the most, that are, we're the most in danger, that always gets our attention, right? And so this parable really gets the disciples' attention. But the impact is lost when you do not have an agricultural background, like many people today, which would not have been the case with the crowds that Christ was speaking to, who amid the majority of them were farmers, or they had some kind of harvesting background at some time working in their lives. Because there is a weed in the Middle East that is very prominent, and it's called darnel. It also goes by another name of tares, which you'll sometimes see referenced in other passages of the gospel. And darnel thrives in the same conditions as a wheat field. And this is the weed that our Lord is speaking about in this parable. And this weed was a huge problem for farmers because darnel is almost identical in appearance to wheat. So if the weed was planted in the wheat field, it would be almost impossible to tell the difference between the two. They look that much alike. And so the farmers couldn't go in and rip out the weeds without running the risk of mistakenly ripping out wheat as well. Until harvest time. Because when the wheat and the weed became ripe for harvest, the ears of wheat would turn a golden brown, while the weed, the darnel, would turn black. And so when the farmers would harvest the wheat crops, it was actually relatively easy for them to separate the wheat from the weed because they could now clearly distinguish the two. Unlike before when they was first growing together and they looked almost identical. And it was very important that the farmers separate the wheat from the darnel because darnel is poisonous to eat. So our Lord uses a very familiar experience as an analogy to illustrate for the Jewish people our conditions, the reality of our conditions in the world. Christ tells us that the wheat are the children of God and the weeds are the children of the devil. And they may look like wheat, they may be out in the midst of all the wheat, but they are not wheat, they are poisonous weeds. And this parable is still very true to our days in the Catholic Church, which is a mixture of both wheat and weeds. Those that are truly Catholic and those that appear to be Catholic, pretend to be Catholic, but are not Catholic at all. And the weeds in the church, I believe, can be divided into two major categories. The first category is what is called nominal Catholics, those that are only Catholic in name. They call themselves Catholic, they pretend to be Catholic, but they do not live a Catholic life. They think that abortion is permissible, that there is nothing wrong with contraception, 
homosexuality, divorce and remarriage, youth in Asia, although all of these things are in complete contrast to a Catholic life. Many of our Catholic politicians fall into this category. They are only Catholic in name, which is not being Catholic at all, because Catholicism is a way of life. It is not being part of a club. You're not going to get through the gates of heaven because you flash a Catholic ID card. Catholics go to hell. Being Catholic is living the faith that you profess. Your actions are consistent with who you claim to be. And if this is not the case, it is better that you not call yourself Catholic. Because first off, like I said already, on Judgment Day, it's not going to help you any. Because you're going to be judged as to whether you live a Catholic life, not as whether you identify as a Catholic. And on top of this, nominal Catholics give Catholicism a very bad name. Because when you claim to be Catholic and you behave in a non-Catholic manner, people associate your behavior with the Catholic Church, regardless if it's contrary to her teachings, because you are their exposure to Catholicism. For example, you can go on the internet and look at anti-Catholic websites, and they'll say things like, well, you know, Hitler was Catholic, Stalin was Catholic. As you see, they're a product of the Catholic Church. They are what the Catholic Church produces. Although these two people are in complete contrast to the demands of the Catholic faith, they didn't live Catholic lives at all. But it doesn't matter. They ignore that because at the end of the day, the truth is Hitler and Stalin were Catholic in name. And that's what they notice. That's what they hold on to, although they were not Catholic in action. Catholic nominalism is a poisonous weed that exists in the church and it is destructive and it is dangerous. They may call themselves Catholic, but they are not Catholic at all. However, these people are actually not that difficult to recognize because their actions, their deeds, their true beliefs betray them because they only call themselves Catholic in an attempt to blend in with the wheat field. But there's another type of Catholic that is much harder to recognize that falls into this category of weeds because they intentionally try to portray an appearance of a devout and pious Catholic while they live a life of grave immorality. They walk around like they literally just popped off a holy card. Hands perfectly folded, head slightly tilted, eyes raised to God. They know all the doctrines of the church, but they are incredibly uncharitable to others. They condemn those around them for their shortcomings. They engage in grave sexual immorality they are filled with pride and arrogance, lacking all humility. They live a life of duplicity. They focus on the externals, showing the part, not living the part. While their interior life is a mess, there is an inauthenticity, a Catholic fakeness, because they do not live the life they profess at all. It's all a show. And unfortunately, a lot of priests can fall into this category, living by the all-holy principle, more lace, more grace. And if this were true, I would be the model of all sanctity. But it's not, because Catholicism is a way of life. It is not looking the part, it is living the part. The whole purpose of externals is that it is supposed to manifest the interior reality, what is true. The whole point of portraying ourselves, of the appearance, is that it's supposed to flow from a true devotion. 
a demeanor of piety, of reverence. Our actions are supposed to be consistent with what we claim to be. What we appear to be, there must be a conformity between who we are and what we are portraying. But unfortunately, a lot of people want to focus just on the appearances because it's much easier to focus on what we look like, looking the Catholic part, than actually having to endure the struggle of living a truly Catholic life according to the teachings of Christ. It is much easier to look the part in an effort to blend in or even at times to convince others that they are model Catholics. But it's all fakeness, a weed that is trying to look like wheat but is not wheat at all. Because once again, Catholicism is a way of life. It is not being part of a club. It is not putting on a show. And so what do we do with this? Because Christ tells us in the gospel that these two types of people are going to be in the midst of us. And he's not going to take care of it until harvest time, when he gets rid of the weeds. And so as Catholics, how do we navigate this? Well, first off, don't be looking at the people in the pews next to you wondering whether they're wheat or weed, okay? I don't want anyone going around saying that person's definitely a weed. But instead, our attention should be directed towards ourselves. We should ask ourselves that question. Are we wheat or are we weed? Do we fall into one of these two categories? Catholic only in appearance or Catholic only in name? We have to make sure that we are truly Catholic. And then second, you cannot allow the people around you who do not practice their faith as they should to draw you away from practicing your Catholic faith as you should. You cannot let the bad example of others influence you. God will judge them for their actions. God will judge you for yours. You need to focus on being a good Catholic, regardless of the people around you who are not. Focus on your life. What people do around you does not affect what you are supposed to do. And in this, you cannot allow yourself to become jaded to others in the Catholic Church. There are many good Catholics. Although there are many that do not practice their faith, there are many that do. There are many good Catholics, more good Catholics than bad Catholics, I would say. You cannot allow yourself to become bitter towards those around you thinking that you are surrounded by people that do not take their faith seriously, that do not live their Catholic faith. Remember that this is a wheat field, not a weed field. You are not alone. And so Christ in the parable today is very open and honest with us. He tells us that in his church, there will be two types of people. There will be those that are the children of God, and those that are the children of the devil. And the children of the devil will try to look like the children of God. And he's going to let the two live together until the end, when he separates them for heaven and for hell. And so we better make sure that we aren't faking it. Because we might be able to fool all of those around us, but we can't fool God. And we're not going to slip through the gates of heaven because we call ourselves Catholic. We need to prove and demonstrate that in our lives. So the question for all of us today is this. Are we wheat or are we weeds?